excuse me. Excuse me. What in the world are you thinking? Me, Gene, the first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. What up, y'all? KNB the Sexy Ninja in the place to be for C Plus Studios. And this is the New World Podcast, brother. And we're talking about Raw is 30 in Philly. Uh, Patrick and Graves on commentary. And I gotta say, man, I was so excited for this show. But there was a lot of fumbles. A lot of fumbles that I just that kind of like irritated me just because I was just like, okay, well, like it starts off Hulk Hogan, brother, you know, waffle, waffle, waffle. He comes out and it's like, Oh shit. Hulk Hogan with Jimmy Hart. He's got mic problems, you know, and that crowd, you can tell that crowd is like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know, they, I mean, I, I already, I already felt off the back. That's what set the tone for the show. Like he came out, he did his thing, you know, he, he was Hulk Hogan brother and did his thing. And, but the mic was going off. So I'm guessing that crowd didn't hear half of what he said, because even the commentary is like, get the man a new mic and stuff like that. So that uh, it was cool to see Hogan, but man, not, not a way to start it off, especially with the mic problem, especially for a show this big, they did a, uh, raw is 30 package. We've seen before us with that rip off blue dot Adidas song, but I think by Brianna, is it Rihanna that does that song? Because it, 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 I remember like when they played that song, I was like, why are they doing I'm blue? Da, da, dee, da, 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 dee, da. Then I actually heard the song. I was like, because I'm feeling good. Or whatever the fucking lyrics are. Like they started with that package. But the package was cool and the song was all right because it, it definitely matched what they were trying to do. You know, the memories. This is 30 years of Raw. I mean, you know, I was five years old when Raw started. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. And, it, you know, it, it's cool. It's cool to look back on those sort of things and seeing all the highlights with Stone Cold, Stone Cold, you know, the rock and great memories. And, like, Becky getting her nose busted. Didn't realize it was that long ago. And just so many things down to the team. And, you know, it, like Mark Henry. It, it just brought back a lot of memories, especially with, like, remembering, like, watching Raw with... My my grandma and uh, my great my grandma Chris and uh, my great grandpa watching uh, wrestling and stuff like that like it just brought back a lot of good memories for me, and I feel like this though this was the meats and potatoes we started off the show with the bloodline the trial of Sammy Zayn this had a lot of emotion running high and I feel like this was like the highlight of the show. <laughs> this and the match with Judgment Day for the Raw uh, Tag Team Championship. Like, this was like, here, we're setting the tone. It's going to go off this way. And after that, the show just kind of eh, fumbles after that. In my opinion, I I really wanted to enjoy the show. I was looking forward to this. I was like, hell yeah, let's see some legends. Let's do this. But we start off the trial of Sami Zayn. And uh, Paul Heyman is like, he's guilty, I want him dead, blah, 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 blah. He shows the ev- shows his evidence. And, and the best part about this whole thing, the best part about this was Sami Zayn says, I have nothing to defend. I have done everything. And Roman's like, you don't have nothing. You know, Roman's is this great, like, you don't have anything to defend. Yeah, I brought you into blood. You know, and then he goes, solo. And man, my heart was like, no, no, please, God, no. And Solo walks right behind him. And, oh, my gosh, I, I jumped up in my seat, and I, I got a little bit of teary. I got teary on this. Like, as soon as Solo was coming in, um, Jay grabs his arm. As soon as he grabs his arm, I was like, oh, man. <clears throat> like, all the emotion in me was like, oh, you know, and that's why I love the memes going around. The Oscar goes to Jay Uso, but he, Jay makes his case. He shows some, some of his evidence. He's like, yo, look, Uso, this dude is like, he's he's taking bullets for us. You know, yeah, I despised him at one time, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he's, you know, throw your, throw your ones up if you want. Sami Zayn, part of the bloodline. And Jimmy joins in. Solo doesn't, though. So, but the whole, that whole crowd was feeling this, man. And we, we, and I was just like, damn, Sam Uso, man, this is probably some of the best storytelling in WWE recently, especially long term. I, I still don't know where we're going to go with this, but we shall see at the Royal Rumble. Will he turn his back on the bloodline then to help Kevin Owens? We shall see. 
But still, Sammy is uh is huge right now. He's he's huge, and that goes right into the Judgment Day versus the Usos for the Raw Tag Team Championship. I really thought uh, the Usos were going to lose their titles, especially when Jimmy got hurt. I don't know if he really got hurt or this was for the story, but they did throw the X up there, and Sammy steps in. He's like, "Hey, I will, I will help." And I was like, "Oh fuck." He's gonna he's gonna be the one that loses the tag team titles for the Usos, you know, making him fall further down the rabbit hole with Roman Reigns and stuff like that. I, I that's what I was thinking, but no, they they won, and it was a damn good match. It was a damn good match. I I was like, oh, let's go, baby. We got two more hours now. Let's let's rock and roll. This was this was fun. Uh, we had JBL and Corbin in the back. They met up. They they saw the Godfather. Godfather was holding it down, baby. You know, for the APA poker games that was going on in the back. You know, that was kind of the theme thread. Is that you can see all the superstars, DDP, and you know, have uh, younger stars <clears throat> interact with everybody and like that. So that that was really cool to see. But uh, Cor- uh my favorite thing about this was um, Godfather was like, "Who's this guy?" Eh, you know, and Corbin's like, "Hey, hey," you know. Damn, Ron Simmons comes out like who's this? Who's this Joker? And JB was like, yo, 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 no, 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 he's with me. He's my protege. Yeah. Then uh, Corbin had to pay some money because <laughs> money talks, you know. So that was fun. But yeah, the the threat of the show just to get everybody in was the poker game, like you know. So LA Knight comes out, cuts a promo, call tell says all those legends in the back that you need to understand, you know. That I, I'm L.A. Knight, and you need to respect me and understand who I am, you know. And he's basically calling out a legend. Behold the Undertaker. Not just the Undertaker, but the American badass, folks. And I will say this, as, as cool as it was, and as fun as it was, kind of struggling there with that motorcycle coming down, like, you know. And, and you know, someone could be like, fuck you, have you ever rode a motorcycle in your fucking life? I'll be like... No, I haven't, but I can tell he was struggling, so fuck off. <laughs> it, it was still cool to see The Undertaker. You know, that's this is what this night was about, and I think this was uh, definitely what it needed needed to be of the passing of the torch to Bray Wyatt. That That's just what I how I feel, because we're promoting the, the big match this sun, uh, Saturday, the Mountain Dew, the blackout, the, the Mountain Dew blackout match between him and L.A. Knight. Bray Wyatt comes out, you know, scares L.A. Knight back into the ring. And Bray Wyatt's right there. He, you know, follows him all the way up. And uh, Taker grabs L.A. Knight, but gives him to Bray Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt, Sister Abigail, bam. And uh, Undertaker walks over and says something to Bray Wyatt in his ear. And definitely a passing of the torch. Like, here you go. Now you are the new darkness of, you know, the WWE with everything with The Fiend and everything like that. And I, I felt that was a good touching moment. Especially... Undertaker, because he's up there, he's up there, and he's he's one of the he's one of the greatest. Um, so more of the poker game backstage. You see DDP. Uh, the, my, my favorite part about this was uh, Dexter Loomis. He just has an axe. <laughs> then there's one moment where he switches back to him, and I, he just he just like staring off into the distance. I was like, oh, I love me some Dexter Loomis. Um, all right, here's my bitching. Here's where the bitching comes in. Here's where I get fucking mad. I was looking forward. I mean, looking forward. I mean, oh my gosh. Like, as soon as they said Bailey versus Becky Lynch is next in a steel cage match, this, I was like, oh my God, they're going to kill each other in there. This is going to be awesome, right? This is going to be like what we were waiting for the blow off this whole um, feud between these two and everything like that. But the match itself did not happen. It was a mugging. It, you know, it. <sighs> Damage control got the advantage over Becky, and they just beat her down to the point to where she couldn't get back up. And it was a real quick, like less than five minutes. Adam Pierce comes out, and then I was like, okay, maybe Becky's gonna get up and be like, no, fuck her, let, let let's fight, you know, let let's fucking fight. I'm the man. Nope, they had her like, oh my gosh, blah, blah blah, and they cut, and that was it. And I was like, really? That that that's what? Well, hold on, hold on. You don't really have that many wrestling matches on this show. You know, we, what you're promoting, you, I know there's going to be a few that pop up here and there, but you are going to tell me that you cut down Bailey and Becky Lynch to merely nothing and a match that 
I, I believe everyone was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to it. I, I was fucking pissed. I was like, that, no, no, that that's it? You know, I, I, are we going to get this still cage match at the Royal Rumble? You know, probably not. We're probably, like, when, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was my frustration. I was like, ah. Uh, and there's certain things in this show I felt like that didn't need to be in the show. You know, uh, I understand that Triple H had a, you know, huge card here to fill. And he had he had a card here that needed to feature everybody. You know, you got to it's raw 30. Yes, you got to have the legends. You got to have the interactions. You got to have this. You know, you got to, you know, and moments like the Undertaker passing off the torch, you know, just so they can use it for the highlight packages and stuff like that. But this match here, this important match cut down to nothing, just a mugging. And I'm seeing it all over online. Everyone's tired of uh, damage controls shit. They're, they're tired of this. They're like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. And, you know, a lot of people are getting upset because the women really weren't represented in this Raw 30 uh, as as much as I, I felt like they should have been. You know, like how, how we go from like having uh, the women main event Raw and stuff like that to boiling down this feud into nothing. And then being like, okay, we'll come back to it. You know, now we gotta go do this. Uh, oh wait, you know what's more important is a DX coming out with Kurt Angle that sets up the next match, and Imperium interrupting and stuff like that, and Seth Rollins coming out. You know, like I was like, as cool as the DX thing was, I I would rather have that steel cage match. You know, and there there was some funny moments with the DX stuff. My one of my favorite things is what Triple H says, like. You know, this booking thing isn't that easy, right? I was like, well, yeah, it could have been if you probably cut this down to nothing. Because this this lasted a long time. More than I think it should have. Imperium came out and they're like, oh, we're going to face you. Then, uh, you know, and Triple H's thing the whole time was uh, to set up the six-man tag team match. Oh, I wish there was, you know, there's there's three of you and we're all old and retired. But I wish there was somebody out here that would come out. Then Seth Rollins comes out. Then he goes, oh, wow. You know, X, I think X-Pac was like, yeah, well, I hope that, uh, you know, there's some team back there. Here comes the Street Profits. And I was like, okay. So we got Street Profits and Seth Rollins versus Imperium. Then all of a sudden I was just like, then I was like, okay, well, now set the match because Triple H can be like, he's the boss, right? No, you got to get a legend put in there. Not only do you got to get a legend in there, you got to get uh, like three factors here. Teddy Long comes out, playa, you know, good to see Teddy Long, and he officiates the match even though he's not really, you know, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I guess. Then they need a special guest, ref- they need a referee, and guess who it is? It's Kurt Angle, you know, and I was like, ah, okay, cool, yeah, you know. <laughs> then out of nowhere, out of fucking nowhere, Jerry the King Lawler's on commentary. <laughs> I know you're probably like, oh, fuck this big head boy, man. You couldn't just have fun with Rod. No, I would say the bad, like, starting with Hogan, the mic problems, then with the what happens with Becky Lynch and um, Bailey's match in the steel cage, just, just put a really big damper on what I was expecting. And I was expecting a lot from the show. I was expecting um, the fucking moon. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, folks. It's because I, I, I like if you listen to the last episode of the New World podcast, I was like, yeah, Raw 30s right around the corner. We're in Philly, baby. We're going to knock this out of the park. But it, it just felt like one thing after another, it, it just wasn't clicking. And even Street Profits and Seth, great spots versus Imperium, you know, Street Profits and Seth got the win. It just, it, it, it was, it was, it was okay. I was mo- mostly there for like, okay, sure. Yeah. Woo. Um, Bobby was backstage, you know, getting prepped for his match. And, yeah, and then that's another thing when we get to the main event. But he's prepping for his match. MVP comes out, more tease of the Hurt business. They use the word business a lot. I got to take care of my business. You got to take care of your business. And I take care of my business. And, you you know, going back and forth in that whole aspect of, like, yes, we're teasing soon. The Hurt business will be back. And I feel like we're going to get a little bit of tease because rumor was was for Raw. But I feel like we're going to get more of the tease of that in the uh, Royal Rumble match itself. And I wonder, you know, how that's going to play a factor, especially with storytelling and everything we need to do. Uh, after this, Ric Flair. Woo! I'm glad it wasn't a promo on him. I'm glad. I was like, I hope he's just introducing Charlotte Flair. And that's what it was. The queen comes out. I was like, okay, cool. You know, 
I, I didn't want a Ric Flair going on and on and on and on. You know, he did his thing, hit his notes, hit his hit his lines, bam, introduces Charlotte. They they hug and he w- walks out there and got a fist bump. I was like, okay, cool. Now this is Charlotte. Charlotte's time. This isn't Charlotte and Flair standing in the ring. This is Charlotte Flair by herself. And what she said in this promo before she was rudely interrupted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, or am I? Bianca comes out. Um because you know she tells her like, "Hey, you're, you're SmackDown. This is Raw. This is my show." But what Charlotte said really made me just like kind of ponder and think in the back of my mind was when she says, "I went from a diva, you know, to a superstar, to a like one of the greatest of all time." And I, when she said diva, I was like, "Damn, you know that 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 age for women's wrestling is so far." in the past that I'm glad it is, you know, cause they, they deserve to be called professional wrestlers, superstars, what, you know, not divas. Cause I'm glad that era's over. And when Charlotte said that, it, it, it made me, it made me feel good inside. It made me feel real good. Bianca comes out. She's doing her Bianca thing. And here comes Sonia Deville, Sonia Deville, uh, it sets up Sonia Deville versus Bianca Belair. And here's the thing. <laughs> We're, we're trying to build this angle with Sonya to get a rematch for the SmackDown Raw. I mean, uh, yeah, the SmackDown Women's Championship from Charlotte Flair. I get it. She's been trying really hard, but to have her lose to Bianca Belair on Raw, yeah, you're probably like, well, why would she? Why would uh, Sonya Deville beat Bianca Belair? Well. If you're building something like Sonya could have cheated, Sonya could have put her her feet on the ropes, she could have grabbed some tights, she could have done something to win this just to show Charlotte that, yeah, I'm coming for that title if you like it or not. Any way, anyhow, if I have to scratch, if I have to claw, if I have to cheat, anything, I am coming for that title and, and impose some form of a fucking threat, you know, to Charlotte. Her losing to Bianca, even if you could have ended this in a DQ, you could have had uh, Sonya fucking come in and hit her with a title and, you know, sending a message to Charlotte like, hey, I'm coming for that title. So fuck you. Fuck these people. Fuck all of you. Fuck everybody in the back. This is Sonya Deville's time and I'm coming for that title. But no, she jobs out to Bianca Belair because it's the right thing to do, I guess. Um but here we go, setting up more for Bianca. She, she cuts a promo saying, yo, Alexa, I'm, uh, Alexa Bliss, I'm ready for you. You know, ready for the rumble, blah, blah. Alexa's on the Tron. And she's looking in the mirror. Alexa Bliss is looking in the mirror. And I don't know why, but I was waiting <laughs> for that Hogan warrior moment, brother. You know, <laughs> when Hogan's like going, going crazy because Warrior's like all over, you know, in WCW. And he Hogan goes to that mirror. And then all of a sudden, here comes uh, Warrior. He's on the mirror and stuff like that. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. And Hogan's like, oh, no, brother. I get you, oh, brother. What's going on, brother? You know, <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. But no, that did not happen. And, uh, Alexa's saying, like, I don't need Bray Wyatt. I don't need Uncle Howdy. I don't care. You know, I'm coming for that championship. And she looked like she meant it. She meant it. So I'm excited about that. Uh, the, the the card itself is not huge because, once again, we got two Royal Rumbles that could go an hour and a half each easily. You know, we got uh, Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens for the Undisputed yeah, uh, Universal Heavyweight Championship, you know, and we have uh, Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss for the the uh, Raw Women's Championship. We have the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match with uh, Bray Wyatt and LA Knight, and I feel like I'm missing one more. I will look at that, but I will do um, a prediction uh, podcast for that, like I usually do. Uh, it's going to be its own separate thing. I usually wait until the SmackDown after in case any matches were added or anything was added to the kickoff show. So we shall see. Uh, okay, boom. Bianca, Alexa, setting it up, building the heat. And I just I disagreed with uh, Bianca winning because I think Sonya needed that win more. <laughs> you know, so... We had a Cody Rose package, and he said something in this package that made me just... Like, give me goosebumps, you know. And usually the, when the package is on, I, I usually don't. I, I've seen most of it. I've seen it over and over again. They add new things here and there because we're building towards him being in the Royal Rumble. But he said something that was just like, damn. He, he said, being in the ring is like oxygen. I really need to breathe again. Man, 
that's fucking Shakespeare. <laughs> that was fucking Shakespeare and a half, okay? And, yeah, it's Cody, I can't wait till you come back. That, Like I said, that line just, just tickled my balls, and I was like, fuck yeah. Uh, okay, randomly in The Miz. I was surprised. I, I, I thought we were going to have some backstage thing with The Miz, but The Miz comes out, and this is just essentially to set up Kevin Owens to you know, stun the Miz and that's it. But the Miz comes out. He's like, where, what do I want in the Miz TV? This was raw 30. This is this, this is that, you know, what the fuck, blah, 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 you know? And here comes Owens and he gets Miz takes a stun. He takes two stunners in this match. And, you know, KO cuts his promo and tells Roman like, Hey, I, I, over my dead body, I will fight and I will beat the shit out of you. I will fucking get that title. And so building that up more crowds into it. Bada bing, bada boom, Miz gets stunned one more time, and that's it. That's it for Kevin Owens, you know. I, I felt like maybe he should have been part of the trial of Sami Zayn, but also I'm glad he wasn't because we had that really great moment with Jay for the save and an Oscar-winning moment, to be really honest. And he's like, I love you, Oos. Okay, now the main event. <laughs> Even my wife was like, you know, because she was t- tuning in on and off, and this is the U.S. United States Championship match. It's the Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley in a no DQ match. Okay? They're supposed to be killing each other, but I felt like I saw more fucking commercial. I was watching more of the match in the commercials than I was during um, actual the actual show itself. Like, I, I was doing the picture-in-picture thing, and I saw more of the match there than I actually saw it on TV. I don't know what happened or what was going on, that was really distracting to the story they were trying to tell. These two were trying to tell in, in that ring because all the best spots came in that, like in the picture for picture thing. I, I was, I was like, Oh God. And I was looking at the time and I was like, okay. N- and then when they came back, they had three minutes left before the show was even over. And I was like, okay, well, and uh, my wife's like, wow. She goes, I, that, that was annoying. I was like, yeah, that was annoying. I was like, there was, there was so many things in this show. That could have been boiled down to, like, you know, to give this match, this caliber of a match, you know, some time. Especially on actual TV and not picture for picture during the commercials while I'm watching fucking Pizza Hut, you know, try to sell me this weird crispy snack fucking thing. You know, it, it, I, I was really disappointed. I was, like, this was another kick in the balls because this was a match that I was looking forward to because I knew I, I wanted Austin Theory to win, of course. And just because I want him to move away from Bobby. I want him to move away from Seth freaking Rollins. I want him to... Now Now we need to build a new feud with Austin Theory. We need to start moving him in a different direction. So, a couple minutes, fucking Brock Lesnar comes out. You know, boom. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> all right, yeah, sure. Brock Lesnar, yeah, you know, shit. I, like... That that would have been cooler if I saw this. I, if I fucking actually saw this match on TV, like <laughs> if I actually watched this match, building up to that moment, then Brock music hit, and it felt so rushed because even Corey Graves on commentary got cut off right when the show was over. Like he was cut off. Like he was in mid sense. Like Brock Lesnar. Blah, blah. That was it. And I was like, ah. So Brock Lesnar comes out. He. F5's uh, Bobby Lashley, then he F5's Austin Theory on the Bobby Lashley. I, I Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, again, I was just like, when Bobby got the win over Brock, I was like, okay, that's good. We can move on, right? We can move on. Cut, print, send it to the, send it to the studio, you know. Now, is the question is, Brock Lesnar, is he in the Royal Rumble? Which I'm assuming so, and then we're going to have a moment with Bobby and Brock in the ring. And they're probably both going to eliminate each other, which will build to a match. Maybe at Elimination Chamber. Is that the next one? Or a match at WrestleMania. I We shall see. It, like it's, and this was one of those things where I everything that I was excited for fell flat. 
and everything like except for the like you start to show off so with, with Hogan yes mic problems then you started off with such a great segment you t- it took about almost 30 minutes of my time but I enjoyed it like the trial of Sami Zayn you know I I was like oh shit and a great tag team match for the Judgment Day and the Usos and having that twist with Sammy, you know, defending. And, you know, you got Roman in the back watching with Paul and Solo and everything like that. Like, you had such a good, meaty fucking build. And after that, everything was eh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. You know, John Cena's on the cover for uh, WWE 2K23. If you want, have you, if you should watch that trailer for the game like he's they're doing the whole you can't see me thing my favorite part of that trailer is right at the end and he's like playing the game and hunter's walking by he's like hey john and he's like hey wait he can see me you know it's silly but it's fun uh john cena's on the cover once again for 2k23 and it's i guess you know it's it's like i feel like the cover should go to the hottest superstar right now and can't really fault it is it really like you could have put a cody rhodes on that cover because this could be that road for redemption but they did built in um this into the game itself and they were showing the videos is you can face john cena and in his weakest and defeat you know biggest defeats in wwe history in his long uh career and stuff like that so i thought i was like oh okay that's cool you know, I I'm excited for that. I'll I'll pre-order that. You know, and they have three packages with three different covers with John throughout his career. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, my rating for this Monday Night Raw Raw is thirty. I give this show a solid two and a half out of five stars because it. I was expecting more. I was expecting the moon. And maybe that's what I should not do is expect things to be as awesome as I want it to be. Is it, I think is because everything's been clicking, 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 clicking. And I, I think Triple H needed a show that did not click very well for me. You know, I, I feel like the crowd had a good time, you know, but as a person who sits on the couch and judges, judge these things, you know, I, as I sit on the couch, it, it definitely was disappointing because this is 30 years of Raw. You've been building it up, building up, building up. And to fall kind of flat in my eyes. I don't know about you. You can drop those comments below. You can you can tell me if I'm wrong. You know, I go for it. Like, be like, oh, fuck you. You just enjoy it. Just, in, you know, the, when I get people on the time, they're like, man, you're so, you're so passionate about this. And so this and that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, because that's my opinion. And at the end of the day, it's my opinion. I thought this Raw is 30 was poo-poo. You know, you, 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 there was things that needed to be cut down to give more time to the actual matches that I'm actually here for, because I was here for the judgment day versus the Usos. I was here for real. I was here for Bailey versus Becky Lynch in the steel cage match. I didn't get that. I was here for Austin Theory versus Lashley in a no DQ match. I didn't ask for Brock Lesnar. I don't even know why Brock Lesnar is there. You know, I, I know it's Raw 30, so they're trying to stuff in as much as they can. But it was like, damn, this is the... Also, too, I think this is why I'm pissed off. I think this is why I'm upset. is because this is the go-home show for Royal Rumble from the Raw perspective. But they had everyone from SmackDown on here as well. So having all those factors into that, it was just like, oh, wait, okay. So either SmackDown's going to be meh or SmackDown's going to have the better send-off for us as viewers to um, Royal Rumble itself this Saturday, so I'm, I'm I'm now I'm I'm expecting something huge to happen on SmackDown that's gonna make me be like, oh fuck yeah, the Royal Rumble Saturday, baby, let's fucking do this. You know, this show did not do that. This show was like, oh well, it feels like Vince was running <laughs> was running the show tonight because it, like you know, and that's no fault. Triple H is doing the best he can, the best he you know he the best he can do. But there's a lot of things I felt like they could have just cut back a little bit time on, you know, they could have cut back on this, cut back on that, you know, but tell me what you think. Like I said, two and a half out of five. I was really disappointed with Raw's 30 and that sucks. (laughs) Then after that, you're going to like and subscribe. You're going to share with your grandma, share with your grandpa, share with the bum down at Walmart. 
I am KMB, the Sexy Ninja, and remember, the New World Podcast is for life, brother. Well, that tape right there demonstrates to me who's loyalty and love to this family. Hey, Sami Zayn, I love you like a brother who's 100. <laughs>